for uh, the event. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Neha Vasist and I'm a first year um, law student at University of Leeds. This event is brought to you by Aspiring Barristers. Aspiring Barristers is an organization centered around supporting aspiring, stu aspiring student barristers from underrepresented groups within the profession with their journey towards the bar. The primary aim of aspiring barristers is twofold. Firstly, to introduce increased diversity initiatives across the profession to foster the development of enhanced diversity at the bar. And secondly, to promote further an ethos of increased accessibility at the bar, irrespective of personal characteristics, backgrounds, or means, so that the profession remains a serious option open to all talented aspiring student barristers. Aspiring barristers also provides a variety of initiatives like this one today, each designed to meet its primary aims. You can find out more about these initiatives on their website. So please check them out if you're interested. I would now like to in introduce our guest panelists for today's workshop. Firstly, I would like to welcome Simao Paxi Cato of the Black Antelope Group. Simao was called to the bar in 2010 and specializes in civil, commercial, family, and public law litigation and disputes. He is both a mediation advocate and an accredited civil and commercial mediator. Welcome, Simao. Thank you for joining us today. Secondly, our uh, another guest speaker is Ms. Abanya Devinish of Whitestone Chambers. Abanya is a practicing barrister in the British Virgin Islands and was called to the Bar of England and Wales in 2019. Abanya has a strong background in commercial law and has provided legal advice to the governor and government of the Virgin Islands, representing the Crown in civil proceedings. Abanya has also worked as a legal advisor for the Single Parent Support and Advice Services Charity. Before we begin the event, I would like to explain to you all how the workshop is structured. As you would have seen in our promotions, um, there are four parts to this workshop. The first part being what is commercial awareness and why is it important? The second part is how can students proactively develop their own commercial awareness? The third part is dedicated to commercial awareness and the pupillage applications process. And finally, the fourth part is uh, open to all attendees who can ask their questions um, anonymously via the chat box during the Q&A session. To all the attendees who've just joined us, um, this event will be recorded. And if you would not like to feature in the recording, please keep your cameras and microphone switched off. Now we can dive in right into the, pro uh, the workshop. So the first uh, topic being, what is commercial awareness and why is it important? My first question is to Abanya, what is commercial awareness and why is it important to commercial practice? Over to you. Thank you. Um, first off, I would like to just um, say that commercial awareness, first of all, is a critical skill. It's very important um, for persons wishing to practice um, at the commercial bar uh, for them to be aware um, commercially of what uh, is expected. So what is commercial awareness? Uh, commercial awareness is essentially um, how the business operates. It's important to know how the business operates, how it makes us money. Um, who are the customers of the business, what the customers want from the business, and the challenges that the business face. Um, put simply, when I speak about commercial awareness, I ask you to look at two aspects. Firstly, internally at the business itself, the company, uh, the chambers, uh, look at how the business is making its money who the major players in the industry are. And you also need to look at um, the challenges uh, that the business face. So what are the challenges? So is it so important, first of all, to look at the news, see what's going on in the industry, uh, look at the regulatory factors, the law governing the business, and also the political forces uh, that affects the business. Um, it, it is crucial for you to, for students to understand what commercial law is 
um, both the internal, internal aspect of it, with the, it relates to the company, and also the external aspect of it as it relates to business news, what's going on around the world, in the industry, how it's affecting the business as a whole. Um, because going into a firm or chambers and just working and just doing drafting a resolution, commercial resolution, or even going to court and representing a client in a case, it's, it's not enough if you don't have the background of why you're doing certain things, what the client wants, how it's affecting the business on a whole, how the business makes its money. Thank you. Um, our second question is to Simao. How does having an abstract understanding of commercial awareness have an impact upon your commercial practice on a practical level? Um, thank you. Um, what I would say about this particular question is that you know law doesn't exist in a in a vacuum. It's a system of rules that are constantly being developed to respond to social, economic and political changes around us. So um, lawmakers will never be able to uh, update the law as fast or adapt to the law as fast as and as specifically as practice requires us as lawyers to adapt to our clients circumstances and their commercial reality. So um, a general awareness of the changes, um, and I think Ivanya uh, touched upon this, an overview of the changes in industry, in politics, in so far as it impacts on commerce and the state of the economy, uh, allows you as a commercial practitioner to look at a dispute or a potential dispute, you know, something that may be about to happen um, from multiple perspectives. Um, so, for example, looking at something from your client's perspective, what's the commercial reality for them? Um, looking at it from the law's perspective, what does the law say about it, regardless of industry or what, what is likely to be a law's approach? Because sometimes we're asked to advise where there isn't necessarily a set answer or there isn't a precedent um, for it. And so you're looking at legal principles. Um, and, and then you also got to con uh, consider the opponent. You know, what's the commercial reality and perspective of the person on the other side or the company on the other side? Um, and so what you do is you, you take those perspectives and you also consider how the knowledge you've gained from your commercial awareness may influence your strategy. For example, you know, um, if you're going to settle, you need to think about short term. It, you know, if it's a settlement agreement, that's, you know, with conditions over a period of time. You've got to think about, for example, commercially, what if you're settling a dispute and you agree to pay a sum of money back at a particular rate? Um, well, interest rates can change. Um, we've seen uh, now in the general market, lots of people who took out mortgages probably didn't see, obviously, the economic changes and now are in a situation where the interest rates have impacted them so much that now they can't afford to, to, to maintain a house. And so uh, as a lawyer you've got to try to kind of think about what might change and you know, if we've had a period of sustained low interest rates the chances that the interest rates will increase are quite high you know probability because they can't go any lower than they are um so those are the things to kind of um think about uh, and really in terms of practice uh, a commercial awareness of the opponent's vulnerabilities can gain you advantage if you think that there might be a motivating factor that they haven't disclosed in the litigation, but you think might be uh, sort of weaken their position. Um, so, uh, you know, that that's it in a nutshell. Thank you. Um, our next question is to Abanya. How has being commercially aware helped and proved beneficial to you in developing a successful commercial practice? Thank you. I think um, in every aspect of my work, most of my work is um, surrounded with commercial law. And I have a lot of matters that I deal with um, in respect of that. And it has been beneficial to me a whole lot. I, I wouldn't have been able to uh, practice competently in this uh, field if I didn't have uh, the background that I have in commercial law. Um, for example, I remember uh, recently, um, I had a case, a matter that I was dealing with, uh, with a colleague um, working as a team. And um, we both got the papers. And my colleague said to me, um, I, 
I think the other side has got this. I, I think that they're going to take us down. And I'm like, OK, uh, let me go home. <laughs> let me look over the papers again and let me see. Um, what uh, our defense is in this matter. And I went home, I looked at the, the papers, reviewed the papers, and I came back and I explained to my colleague, I said, never, never go into a case <laughs> with that attitude. And I showed my colleague exactly um, where we, you know, because I've been listening to the news that I said in my opening um, about commercial awareness, there are always changes happening around the world in the commercial sector, the, in the industry, there are always different uh, authorities being developed. And um, I keep up to date with that. And I was able to show my colleague, direct my colleague to a recent matter um, that was um, decided on. And we went into court and <laughs> I mean, it, it was so much on our side. And she was like, um, thank you so much. I mean, I really need to look more into to this and we listen to the news more so I, I can't stress enough how is how important it is to keep up to date with the news listen to the news read the news um especially when you're in practice it, it helps a whole lot in helping you develop your practice and understanding how you can effectively argue your case and how you can effectively represent your client in a competent manner thank you very much um, my next question is to Simao. Can you think of any instances during your career to date where your commercial awareness knowledge has been particularly useful to you? Um, yes, I mean, uh, Nina, what I would say about this question again is that um, commercial awareness, you know, is useful to you um, throughout your practice. Um, I think on a more general level, um, being aware of what's happening in industry, what's happening in business, uh, gains you an advantage. You know, uh, it's very common as a barrister that you will, um, you know, clients will sometimes want to test and, and check that you understand them and their business and their perspective before they will instruct you, or at least before they'll give you the whole case. So they may ask for a conference to have a discussion and get some advice. And so if you, during the course of that conference, if you demonstrate an insight for their business or the drivers around their business or what they're doing, they're going to say, all right, this person gets what I do, what I really do, what the business does, what it needs to, you know, um, get out of this outcome. And, and so by having good commercial awareness, you're more likely to be able to develop a rapport with the client. And if the client likes you, then they're more likely to obviously instruct you and give you the work. But also it helps during the course of a case, because if you've got good communication, um, then that is going to strengthen your chances of getting a successful outcome. I mean, ultimately, the clients know the case better than you do. And your job as a lawyer is sometimes to, 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 to get that information out of them. And uh, if they feel that, that you can relate and you understand them, you're, they're more likely to share that with you. But also because you've got an awareness of what may be important, you're more likely to ask the kind of questions that's going to elicit the information that you need. And they'll be like, oh, yeah, I hadn't thought about that, but you're absolutely right. I did have this. And actually, this is relevant. And sometimes, um, you know, that's part of the process. So um, and then I'll give a, a more specific a, a example, because you did ask for a particular instance uh, in my career. So um, I'm just thinking uh, back to uh, a particular kind of high value um divorce case I gave, uh, I did for a client of mine who was uh, in the property, a property developed industry um, and very, very successful. And again, uh, he had one of these scoping conferences where he wanted to, to know if I understood it because really this wasn't, in his view, a traditional divorce case because there was a business and it was all about what happened to the business and what the strategy would be for the business that would make him decide who would go for and he wanted uh, a barrister that had uh, awareness commercially of the kind of business side of perspective not just um, the kind of divorce dispute and um, one of the issues was obviously there were a large number of assets um, but the issue was whether distributing them because it was a long marriage and 50 50 would that lead to his business having to be closed down and as somebody who has uh, run a business, not just being a barrister, but as a, as a business owner uh, and, and manage a business, you know, one of the things that I had learned, and particularly post-recession, post-2008, 
um, in running a business is that the way that banks decide how to lend you money um, sometimes doesn't make sense. At least it doesn't make sense to the average kind of person. So um, banks put a lot of value into how long a business has been running. And certainly they were at that time. And so um, the issue became that although he was very successful and he could show that he was good at identifying land for development and you know was always very successful at getting higher returns was that this divorce there was a good chance um that if it wasn't dealt with carefully he would have to close that business and the assets and, and start it up uh, a new business but a new business would have no trading history and with no, no trading history he wouldn't be able to borrow the money so that he could make and enjoy the kind of lifestyle that he wanted to once he got divorced. And so um, because I was aware of this fact about in terms of the importance of keeping the business going, mostly because of its credit history, was more valuable than, you know, necessarily all the properties and the assets. You know, the fact that I knew that and the strategy was being built around that made meant that he was influenced but I, I understood from the business perspective what needed to happen uh, and and therefore um I got instructed to deal with the case going forward and you know and he had a change of representatives thank you very much for sharing that with us um our next and last question for this uh, particular section uh is Tobania can you think of any instances during your career to date where you consider that it was your commercial acumen which may have swung or strongly influenced the outcome of a case? Yeah, so I can think of um, many um, instances where I have um, represented um, clients um, in company matters. And I would just like to broaden and say, well, um, it's not only uh, sometimes working in a commercial law firm, but I also have got the opportunity to work in tax. So I worked at um, HMRC and in, in those uh, in that capacity, I was able to um, represent uh, the government um, on matters in relation to taxpayers, come across matters that I had to use my commercial awareness skill um, in order to actually put across a point to a client. And for example, on, on one occasion, I had a matter uh, that was a corporate matter and it had to do with taxes. And um, I can't disclose any particular instances because of confidentiality, uh, but I was able to explain um, to the um, organization exactly what um, happened, um, why they were in the position that they were in, because this was a matter that was ongoing for years. And I was able to resolve that matter because of my commercial awareness. And it, then uh, you find that other person in your organization come to you and say, how did you do this? How did you know how to do this? But because of the background that I had, um, I was able to um, solve the, the issue that has been outstanding for a number of years. So I can think of a number of instances, um, not directly always related to um, working in a law firm per se, but even when I worked in taxes, um, which crossed law corporate tax. And, you know, that, that's the important thing of being open to working in different sector. It broadens your awareness commercially um, as to how to advise your clients and what is expected in certain instances, even um, not only, for example, advising the client of uh, drafting a document or representing them in court, but you can have a broad spectrum of skill. And I was able to use that in that instance um, to actually sway the case and uh, solve a, a matter that was outstanding for a number of years. Thank you very much. Um, so in our first part, we learned about commercial awareness and um, about both our guest speakers' respective commercial practices and their experiences. Now we'll be moving on to the second part, which is how can students proactively develop their own commercial awareness? Um, my first question is to you, Samal. How can students go about developing their own commercial awareness? Um, in terms of there are lots and lots of ways to obviously develop commercial awareness. I don't think there is a, a set path 
um, you know, and it's something that you can come out from different perspectives. And I think uh, a lot of students may not always be aware of the opportunities around them uh, towards, you know, they may have actually gained commercial awareness, but they're not thinking about it as commercial awareness when they approach, for example, applications. So, um, you know, you can gain commercial awareness, for example, let's say you've got uh, a family member who runs their own business, you know, going out there and working with them or seeing the kind of challenge that they have in their business is a way for you to understand, again, how do businesses work? What do they think about, you know, what does it take um, to make things work? You know, what are the problems? What are the challenges? Um, again, you know, if you've done any kind of work experience, you can think about it, not just specific about what that business does, but, you know, why is this a business? What's the, what's similar between this business and other businesses? You know, what's the nuts and bolts? Um, then you've got obviously obvious sources of kind of uh, developing commercial awareness, obviously current affairs, being aware of what's happening in the world is important. I mean, not literally everywhere, but at least you should be able to understand, you know, what's happening, where you are, um, if you have a particular interest in a, you know, in a specific part of the law, then you might think about what's happening in that area of the law, and that may be looking at things not just in the UK but you know, internationally as they impact that area of law. But certainly knowing what's happening, um, it can be in the newspapers, it can be on the radio. Um, you know, find the medium that works for you. You know. Not everybody wants to sit there and read a newspaper all day. If that's not how it works for you, then, you know, listen to radio or, um, you know, find some other source for kind of conversation and what's happening. Um, you know, in terms of obviously the bar, um, I always say that, look, if you are looking to go into an industry, know what's happening in that industry, what's happening for them. So, you know, as barristers, we have something called Council Magazine, which is uh, comes out monthly and it you know, usually covers issues around different areas of, you know, barristers practice and what's happening, challenges. It's always good for an aspiring barrister to be aware of what's the profession thinking about, what is on their mind and how might that impact me if I'm going to join this profession. Um, you know, if you're working with clients, you think about, well, you know, what's my client reading? What's on their coffee table? You know, what are they thinking about when they get up in the morning because if they're thinking about it more likely than not at some point it might end up with a brief on your desk you know to advise about that specific um, issue so um, you know those are all the kind of things you can think about to try to really just develop your employability. Thank you very much those are very helpful tips. Um, my next question is to Banya. How can students maintain good commercial awareness? Okay, um, for me, I know when I was at the University of Manchester, um, the students were given the opportunity to join a lot of uh, clubs. So you, a lot of uh, different firms would come in uh, and we had Alan Lovery, um, we had uh, the, the um, Alan and Overy, we had, I think, Eversheds. We had a number of different firms um, that came into the university and they offered um, workshops. So I would say definitely get into those clubs, um, join those clubs in your undergraduate year. Um, volunteering is a very, very good way as well. Um, not only paid employment, I know that a lot of times uh, people look at um, experience through paid employment, but I would say definitely look at volunteering um, where you get the opportunity to develop your commercial awareness. Uh, I know that um, there's some firm, um, Everbright, and they, they do that, the, the Everbright invitation thing um, where you can actually uh, pretend as if you're like a legal um, part, you're part of the legal team and they will give you assignments to do. Um, I think um, I, I've, Alan and Overy does that. So you can um, join those um, online and try and you know practice, do the assignments. Um, it's not only, as I said, about paid employment. Um, it's something that you can do voluntarily. Um, it helps develop your skills. And again, read the paper, keep up to date with the news, listen to the news, 
and uh, I mean, those are the, the key things that you would need to do um, in order to de develop uh, commercial awareness. And of course, you have to do your research. Okay, on the side, you do your, you do your research, read books, um, you have access to LexisNexis, you have access to Westlaw, you have access to all those online library. Do research, the, the field that you're interested in, get a mentor as well. Um, there are a lot of people in chambers who are willing to assist students. Uh, they are on Lincoln, um, find them, <laughs> you know, reach out to them. You're interested in the, what the chamber, the practice of the chamber, reach out to them. And um, there are a lot of them are willing. I know Whitestone Chambers, the chambers that I'm a part of, um, they do a lot of volunteering uh, in terms of helping students, the, help of the, the head of chambers uh, do a lot of that. So I would definitely say find a mentor, read the paper, get involved in university activities, get voluntary work experience. And if you can also, of course, get paid work experience. So those are the key things. Yeah. Thank you very much. Those are also some very helpful tips. Um, my next question is to Samal again. Are there any particular resources that you recommend students familiarize themselves with? and engage with to assist them with the process of developing and then enhancing their own commercial awareness? Um, what I would say about that, Nina, is that there are, obviously, there's probably more resources out there than even I'm aware of. But I mean, in terms of ones that I have had, you know, either I use or have used or you know, had kind of personal uh, contact with that I think are quite good. Obviously, you've got, you know, the Times, uh, newspapers, you know, is is established as having a kind of particular legal section, uh, and they have got a really good kind of business section as well. Um, you know, you can get a subscription to the Times app, so you can kind of read the the kind of legal news and the general kind of business news on a daily basis. You know, particularly if you're commuting, you're getting on a train, a bus. You know, even if you lose reception, you can normally read day stories for that period of time when you're offline you know in a tube or or, or somewhere else uh, and just catch up and just make it part of a, a routine you know you might not give yourself the first five ten minutes when you wake up in the morning you're going to read quickly today's stories have a think about you know what might be the impact of those you know um in terms of you know gender industry and business law um and think about that obviously uh, you know you've got law libraries Law libraries normally have quite, uh, you know, a comprehensive section on different materials, journals, and uh, those are free. So while you're a student, take advantage of that, you know, um, take the time to have a browse, see what's there, maybe speak to the librarian about making additional recommendation if there's something that you think would be really, really good. Um, you know, consider, you know, at this stage, if you're thinking about becoming a barrister, you may have an idea of particular sets of chambers or you may have an idea about doing more broad work experience you know even at law firms uh, as part of that and so look at these potential places that you might want to work out what are they writing about what are they talking about you know where's the sources for this conversation that they're trying to engage people in and that will give you an idea about where, like, you know, as I said before, what's your client reading? You know, what's on their coffee table? Um, the lawyer portal, obviously, um, again, um, you know, it's a, it's a really good resource. You know, they go and do talks nationally around different topics. Um, so you can always listen to more people, give you more and new ideas. Other lawyers will have a different perspective on what commercial awareness is, you know. Um, it may not necessarily be what, uh, me and Abena have talked about uh, this evening, they may have a slightly different twist, um, but there'll be a reason for that. So think about that, you know, um, you know, what's the, what's the reason for these differences, these perspectives, um, and then, you know, uh, and, and just think about that. But obviously, I hope as well, um, you know, with our role in this, that, you know, aspiring barristers will be a platform for students to, to look at and they can go and, you know, listen to these videos and these talks. Um, and again, get some value from that. Thank you very much. Um, my last question is to you again. Um, how long does it take, in your opinion, for a person to become commercially aware? 
Is commercial awareness something that can be acquired in a shorter span of time? perhaps in the weeks leading up to a pupillage interview at a commercial set, or is becoming commercially aware a process that needs to take place over a longer period of time? Um, yes, I mean, what I would say, you know, thinking about oh, many years ago, when I was um, making applications, I remember being law school. I mean, my own personal opinion is that you're not going to, if you suddenly for the first time start thinking about commercial awareness, two or three weeks before an interview, that's not long enough. You may be lucky and they don't ask you anything that's that's relevant, but that's definitely not enough time to be commercially aware. Um, you need to be um, thinking about it and being part of that process, you know, I would say you know, at least three or four months before, you know, you're even then, because it's, it's something that you've got to put into your routine and into your kind of practice. It's a habit um, that you've got to develop. And, you know, particularly if you're going to think about what's happening, what are the changes, or if you've been in there for three weeks, you're likely to see patterns or be able to analyse how things are changing, how the law is responding, because it's such a short period of time. Whereas the longer that you give yourself, the more that you can talk about, this is where we started, this is where we are right now, or this is where I think we're going, um, these are the changes that have come about, and it gives you more to talk about. You know, you're not able to just talk about one thing. You're able to draw inferences and patterns from various different kind of strands. So, you know, in my view, uh, if you are, for example, you know, studying or you've just started or on a course, start now. You know, if you know applications are starting in the spring or in the summer, you know, start now. But also, if you start now, you put yourself under less pressure because it takes time to develop habits and then you're not sort of stressing about not doing it every day but as long as you're doing it regularly then you will build up a, a pattern thank you very much um so in this uh section we learned about how uh, students can proactively develop their own commercial awareness and um, both of our guest speakers have given us a lot of tips and, and the different kinds of ways we can access the resources that could help us improve our commercial awareness. Um, we now move on to the third part of this workshop, which uh, is commercial awareness and pupillage application process, which uh, a lot of aspiring barristers would be interested in. Uh, my question is to you both. Um, why is it important to chambers that prospective pupils are able to demonstrate good commercial awareness? Okay. Um, Simone, you want to go first? Or? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to. Oh, you to, want me to? to, okay. to it doesn't matter. No, no. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to, to go first okay. in person, so that's fine. Um, why is it important that pupils or prospective pupils are able to demonstrate good commercial awareness? I mean, ultimately, um, chambers, any training organization, any employer is going to be looking at what's the ability of an individual to come yeah. into the business and work with the kind of clients that yeah. we work with, you know. And so, you know, are they a, a good fit um, for uh, the clients that we're working with? Um, do they understand about the drivers commercially? You know, would they be able to um, have that level of kind of credibility uh, with client. So that's obviously a, a particularly important um, you know, factor. They want to know that you're paying attention to what's happening. You know, are you really interested in this area of practice? Because you can show that you are aware of the cases that are happening in that area. You're aware of, you know, what work um, Chambers and the organization has been doing. It's very common, you know, from my years of kind of sitting on, you know, committees um, to find people that don't mm -hmm. even use the resources in front of them. You know, they'll go for an interview at an organisation and they wouldn't have read their website. I mean, you know, that's a very simple source for you to find out who are they, what are they doing, what is the kind of work. Um, and so if you don't do the basics, then again, even if you're a very good candidate, even if you've got great ability, um, Chambers are also looking at, do you want to be here? You know, we want somebody that really, uh, you know, wants to be here. They want to feel like valued, like this is somebody that wants to be part of um, our organisation, our brand, and wants to kind of develop with us. So um, that's why, you know, commercial awareness is very important. 
Yeah, so our next. So, uh, one of the things um, that I've realized now with the most recent clients is that um, clients are up to date. Now, clients know when they're getting good advice and they know when they're not getting so good advice, not so good advice. Um, chambers want competent people, people who are able to give clients proper advice. I mean, with the social media, the internet, everything uh, nowadays, um, clients, as I said, they're up to date. So it's so important that chambers get uh, competent people to work for them. If you don't understand commercial awareness, you don't understand what you're doing, you wouldn't be able to provide uh, proper advice to the clients. And that is the essential thing um, for Chambers is that they're able to hire people who know exactly what they're doing, understand why they're doing it. Because, I mean, you can do work and if you don't understand exactly why you're doing it, uh, you actually, you make a lot of mistakes. I know that because you miss a lot of things. And, and that, that, that is why it's, it's so important. Um, chambers want, as I said, competent people, people who understand what, it, what they're doing, why they're doing it. Chambers is in the business to make money, to start to, to meet the client's needs as well. Um, when I said to make money, I mean, if you're running a business, you have to have people who, can, who are able to do the work, people who are committed to the area uh, that the chamber is functioning. And that is why it's so important that if, you, if you're looking to go into a commercial chambers, you understand exactly what the chambers do. You understand commercial awareness. You understand the type of work that chambers is involved in. Um, because if you don't understand, you would just be going to chambers and do work and you wouldn't do the work up to standard of chambers. And obviously that would make chambers lose clients. Um, we have very, very educated clients now. Um, so I think it's so important that we recognize that, um, not that in the past clients wasn't um, to date, but because we have more um, aspect of social media, everyone understands, almost everyone understands exactly what's going on. So we have clients that understand the industry and it's important that as lawyers, we're able to competently and properly advise clients. And that's why Chambers would want uh, persons who are commercially aware to, to join their practice. Thank you very much for it. Um, that was uh, very helpful for those of us who are planning to apply for the commercial um, chambers. Uh, um, my next question is to Simao. How can candidates demonstrate good commercial awareness during the pupillage application process? Um, yeah, I think I've touched, obviously we talked about how to develop and maintain commercial awareness. So if you've been doing all the things, reading, um, looking at these various sources, then you will have, you know, you'll be able to have a conversation anywhere about what's happening, what's happening commercially, what's happening in industry, what's happening in, in, in business, what's happening in, in for this particular chambers or this particular set um, in terms of the work that they're doing, you know, what's what's everyone talking about? You know, what's the big cases this year? You know, what's the, the trends? And so ultimately, at, you know, at some point, somebody's going to ask you in the pupilage process, why do you want to apply to be a pupil with us? You know, it's inevitable. And you, there are lots of obviously different reasons. That there can be a really good training environment and, and so on. But at some point, it's probably going to be relevant about the work that they do why do you think you see yourself there um the the ways in which you understand or you think you have an insight into the work of a, of a barrister and the standards that you need to meet um, and so it will be obvious in the answers for example if you're given an answer and you're asked to give an example of a, of a case you know if you give a case that's really um relevant to where you're interviewing at because either they're involved in it or because it's, you know, it's the thing that everybody's talking about. Or, you know, if you find something that isn't in the most obvious place, you know, it's it's not a story that anybody can kind of talk about, then you're more likely to show insight in terms of, yes, this person's gone um, beyond um, the kind of basics. They really kind of understand what's happening or what the issues are and you'll be able to talk about it authoritatively you know obviously from the perspective of somebody who's a, a prospective pupil not necessarily to stand a barrister but you'll be able to talk about it in a way to create a conversation between you 
and the panel interviewing I think if you have a conversation rather than sort of you feel like um you know you're being uh, kind of interviewed um then you're more likely it's you know you you raise something that they find interesting and and, and they want to kind of build up on thank you very much um my last question for today um is what is your top piece of advice or your top tip for students wanting to enhance their commercial awareness. I know you both shared us, uh, shared us, you know, invaluable, uh, ex you know, advice and experience so far. But is there anything in particular that you would say is your top tip um, for students uh, in terms of enhancing their commercial awareness? I would say definitely keep up to date with what's going on in the news. Keep up to date, see how the industry is being affected, see what regulatory changes uh, are happening, how the laws are developing, how they're changing, and look at the political forces, see what um, has been happening in terms of with the changes in government, how that has affected the policies and, you know, just, just be aware of what's going on around you and how it is affecting the industry and how it's uh, affecting the economy. Just keep up to date. That's the top tip. Keep up to date with what's going on, the changes in the law, the regulatory um, changes. Keep up to date with that. And once you're up to date with that and you continue your research, continue reading and keeping yourself uh, abreast of what's going on, then that should help keep, keep your commercial awareness up to date, help you develop your skill even further. Yeah, um, and just to add that, I, you know, I support everything that Abania said. Um, um, just to add to that, I think, you know, look, try to take different perspectives on what's happening in the world and you know you're obviously aspiring law students so you'll have a, an idea about the law and the way it works and you know you might read it from that perspective but you know think about what's happening out there and think about if you were a business owner you know how would you look at it you wouldn't be thinking about you know contracts and torts and stuff you'd be thinking oh there's this new law and it's going to cost me more to comply so that means it's going to affect my profits. It's going to affect how I employ or, you know, because of this new rule, I, you know, for example, uh, you know, we think about Brexit and how much paper that's created. People then found it challenging to import ingredients. You know, you could be a restaurant owner and you think, oh, right, I can't get ingredients, but I'm meant to be a restaurant owner. I provide authentic food. Therefore, it's going to be fresh. Where am I going to get it? You know, what's going to be in their mind? And then you start to think about, the ways in which legal issues could come come about, you know, and how are they going to kind of deal with that? So just constantly be taking different perspectives. Think about as if it was your business and you were running it and you were challenging it and then look at what the lawyer would kind of analyze it and then think about a way to bring those two together, because then you, you will be able to communicate with that business owner who would be your client because you would understand the way they look at things, but you'd also be able to bring them into your kind of arena and explain to them the way the kind of law works and then you can work together to find that solution. Thank you very much. Um, both of your answers were really helpful and I'm sure all of the attendees have made lots of notes on how they can improve commercial awareness um, and their understanding of it. Um, so this is uh, the third uh, segment of this workshop completed. Now we're moving on to the Q&A section where all of our attendees can put down their questions in the chat box and uh, can ask their questions to the guest panelists themselves. Please feel free to put any questions that you may have in the chat box and uh, we can ask uh, any of our guest speakers to answer them for you. If you feel brave enough, you could also unmute yourself, switch on your videos and ask your question yourself. We've got a question from Noon. Um, how do we improve our commercial awareness from the internal point of view of law firms or chamber, chamber sorry? Is, 
Okay. Um, so I think I addressed that I addressed that at the opening, um, uh, saying that um, the the important thing uh, with commercial awareness, you have to look at the internal point of view and the external point of view. The internal point of view, I think, think would be um, definitely looking at what the uh, chamber does, um, how the chamber makes its money, the clients of the chamber, what the clients want. Uh, you have to look at uh, the, the type of customers chamber has, what the customer wants, um, the, how the chambers make the profit, and um, uh, understanding the business. That is the key thing, understanding how the business operates. Research the chambers, what they do, how they operate, the law governing the, 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 the uh, industry that the chamber uh, operates in. So that, that is the key thing, how the chambers operate to make its money, what the customers of the chambers, the clients, call them, what the clients want, um, and how the chamber meet those, those needs. So understand, and understanding the regulatory forces that affects the business that chamber carry on on a daily basis. Thank you, Vanya. Um, our next question uh, is, do you think attending the business advice clinics in the university will help uh, one to secure a privilege? Um, yeah, I'll, I'll take this question. So obviously it's not going to hurt your chances. I mean, um, I don't think just attending the advice clinic on its own will um, give you a privilege. Obviously there's an application as part of the whole process, but I think you're likely to gain valuable experience. I mean, first of all, I mean, I don't know too much about this specific business advice clinic, but if it's a, a, a student clinic um, where, you know, people in business can come and get free advice from students, one, you're, it's going to mean that you are uh, in contact with different people, different businesses, different industries. And with each different business, different industry, you're likely to gain a new perspective. So it's going to help with client handling skills in terms of having to go to conference, being able to have conversation with business people, see their perspectives, understand some of the challenges they might have. Um, so uh, I, I think that if you do it consistently, it's likely to increase your commercial awareness, it's likely to increase your kind of confidence uh, and to be able to then answer the question, well, you know, what are business people looking for? Because, you know, you can also think about the before and after. What did they come to the clinic for? How did they feel about the advice they got from you? And um, what kind of impact that they had, you know? Um, and then you're able to show the importance of high quality, you know, advocacy and, and legal advice and the differences it can make to different people. Thank you very much, Zinal. Um, our next question is from Ivanka. Could you please kindly recommend a reliable source for commercial awareness? For example, um, Ivanka has recently discovered the BBC podcast, Wake Up to Money, which um, Ivanka found absolutely useful. Are there any other similar sources like this in your point of view? Or have you come think, across any? Yeah, um, so I, I would say Bright Network, um, they do a lot of commercial awareness workshop. I would say um, that's a good uh, ground for students as well to look at and to read. Um, on their website, you can uh, find information about commercial awareness. So that's a good uh, source as well. Yeah. In addition to the news, of course. Thank you. Um, our next question, um, I think we've got someone who's raised their hand. Um, feel free to unmute yourself, you can ask the question. Good afternoon, thank you, and good afternoon to your panelists and everyone that is participating. I just have a question in regards to the commercial awareness academies. I've seen now the, the market is pretty saturated with this academy, they, they promise us they can teach us, or they, I don't know, we can improve our skills. What is your opinion? Because obviously they're quite pricey and for a student, it is an effort to enroll in this kind of academies. Thank you. Okay. Um, uh, Andrea, hopefully I'm, oh, uh, I've said your name correctly. Um, I'm not aware, obviously, of this um, uh, academy, but what I would say is that, you know, particularly, you know, as a student, commercial awareness shouldn't be something that you should have to invest lots of money in. It is something that you have to invest time in. And so 
um, you know, time is something that you have to dedicate to if you want to develop commercial awareness. We, you know, touched upon sources, things that you can read and you can do. And um, you know, if you want to be able to, you know, continue developing that, think about having a mentor, somebody that you can speak to, maybe somebody in practice that you can discuss. Com, you know, topics about uh, has a sounding board, um, have that regular kind of contact with um, who might be able to give you some obviously guidance. Um, you should have, um, you know, again, there should be a sort of careers uh, clinic or workshop where you are. Uh, and, you know, chambers and different organisations will have open days, they will have law fairs. That's also a chance to ask questions um, and get more specific answers about the sort of things that you should be looking at and where you should be directing your kind of a, a attention to. Um, but the, the important thing is about the routine, the habits, um, being aware of what's going on. And, you know, we live in a world where we have the internet, we have so many sources of information um, that there isn't a need, in my view, to, to, to kind of go to academy. Um, you know, then once you've got the commercial awareness, maybe, um, the thing to think about is how do you, you know, communicate that the way that you communicate generally your interview skills. But uh, I wouldn't think that the academy is going to kind of focus on how you actually interview, which is a kind of separate skill that you can kind of work on uh, and you can deal with. But um, from my perspective, there are enough resources there for you to be able to kind of be commercially aware. And um, uh, if you just dedicate the time and, and read the news and current affairs and be up to date on what's happening. Thank you very much. Um, we received another question. Uh, the, it asks, are there any commercial challenges facing Chambers right now? Sorry, then can you just repeat that question? Sorry. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, are there any commercial challenges facing Chambers right now? I think there are always uh, commercial challenges um, facing chambers as well as other law firm. Um, when you look at the news, so that's why I keep going back to news, um, you would see that um, recently there have been a lot of regulatory changes. Um, where I am in the British Virgin Islands, um, we have re recently uh, had a lot of laws that is um, come from the Brit exit, um, as well as in, even in the UK, um, a lot of taxes uh, law have just changed, you know, corporate tax went down. Um, so obviously um, you would find more companies uh, being um, co corporate, uh, incorporated, they have less uh, tax to pay, but there are de definitely a lot of uh, different regulatory changes that happens all the time. That's why it's so important to uh, keep up with the news. Um, I'll, I'll let Sabo um, expand on that um, if he wants to, yes. Um, yeah, I, I, you know, I think there's always, uh, in, if I think about what's happening right now, well, you know, if you look about the UK, um, the economy is in a pretty uh, difficult position. So in terms of clients as well, sometimes obviously when the economy is in a recession, um, clients may choose not necessarily to go and get advice when they should. Um, and that can lead to challenges because then you're advising at a later stage when sometimes there's problems. Um, you know, the, the fact that, you know, money becomes a, an issue and a, and a real, you know, challenge for everybody might mean, for example, from a, a, a lawyer's perspective is that you see more people trying to mediate the way because of the commercial risk of uh, going to trial and you know, incurring tens of, if not hundreds of thousands of pounds of litigating, um, that may be in the current climate, a risk that companies on, and businesses aren't willing to take because it could be the difference between uh, staying in business and, and going out of business. Um, again, you know, uh, making sure um, you know, people are being paid on time, that's a, a kind of commercial challenge. In terms of the advice work that we do, um, you may see more, for example, if you're working in property, you may see more possessions because people can't afford uh, their commercial rents. Um, and so you may, you know, if you do property work like I do, you may see more 
uh, possession work in, in terms of that, um, but also recovery could be an issue um, where your clients, um, uh, for example, are able to um, gain the property back, but they may have to write off arrears, which obviously is going to be a factor for them. Um, and obviously they're going to incur your fees uh, as well, which may not be recoverable from the other side if they become insolvent. Um, so there are always ways that you can think about what is happening right now. How does that impact people more generally? How does that impact us in the way that we kind of work with them, the conditions that we work with them? Thank you very much, both of you. Um, we've got a question in the chat. Um, what are the practical steps to secure pupillage? I think this is a quite broad question, but um, is there any particular tips that you would share uh, from your personal experience? What um, I would say, about, yes. oh, sorry, yeah, oh, go ahead, Sava. Yeah, um, in terms of, yeah, obviously, the, the, there's no kind of set process of securing pupillage, but uh, I think you need to, you know, on the one step, there are obviously the academic steps, which we you know, won't talk to. I think you all be aware of what you need to do, obviously, academically in terms of getting yourself your qualifying law degree, um, trying to get the, the best marks that you can. But, you know, if you're thinking about obviously um, securing pupillage, um, then, you know, you need to identify at an early stage where you think you're going to be applying to, um, because you need to be, you know, you can't be thinking about commercial awareness or you can't be thinking about who you're going to be applying to three weeks before. Um, you know, identify where you would like to be um, well in advance and um, start to really focus on you know, those chambers uh, and, you know, well in advance, start to follow them. What are they doing? What are the activities? What's happening for them to understand, um, you know, the privilege process in terms of that you need to kind of meet. Um, one thing that I think is always helpful is look at an organisation, you know, if you know people are currently pupils there or have been pupils and recently qualified, look at experiences. What were they doing before pupillage? You know, um, sometimes you start to see patterns emerging about the kind of characteristic, the kind of experience that's being valued um, at an organisation in terms of the pupils that they take on. And then you can think about what's my experience and um, how similar is it? Or, you know, what could I be doing to bridge that gap? Um, because if you do that, then you're likely to kind of make yourself uh, more well-rounded and um, definitely get lots of interview practice. Uh, and not just with lawyers or barristers, with anybody. Um, interviewing is a skill in itself. It's not specific to applying for pupillage. You know, your parents, friends and families can ask you more difficult questions than you'll find in a pupillage interview. You know, um, why do you think certain things? Why do you have certain beliefs? How can you explain it? Can you communicate that clearly to somebody who's not a lawyer? Can they understand your motivations? Um, for trying to kind of secure pupils. Um, so do that, you know, and it doesn't matter that you don't, you find you struggle to answer the questions, your ums and ahs, get those out of the way so that when you get that interview, you're able to, you know, deliver really polished, um, you know, performance. If I can add to that, I would just like to say as well that uh, you should also be open to getting other experience that can lead to you getting pupillage as well. So for example, I know there are other pathways, uh, there's CILX and then you can uh, qualify, you can get other experience because I know every year there's thousands and thousands of uh, bar students uh, that are buying for pupillage. So be open to gated other experience that can take you along your path. Don't look at it from one way. You have to be open to gated other experience. Sometimes it means going out of your comfort zone, going to another country, getting the experience once you can afford it, um, just to make sure uh, that you qualify, you spend your money, you spend your time at university, you work hard, be open to other opportunities that can get you on the path to getting pupillage as well, uh, uh, qualifying, uh, meeting the, the, the objective of the, B, uh, BP, the, the, the BSB, sorry, so that you can qualify as a barrister, be open to other parts as well. 
in order to lead you to that place. Thank you very much. I hope it's answered um, your question. Um, following on from uh, pupil age related um, questions, um, what would your advice in a pupil age interview setting be if um, one is asked about a commercial awareness question about a particular issue in the news that um, one is not familiar with or has very little knowledge about? I think um, if you get, you know, uh, as I said, because there are so many different uh, events, stories, you know, it's, it's very possible that, you know, something may happen that you're not aware of. But the important thing is not to panic and, you know, remember to engage the interview panel in a conversation. So, you know, you might, for example, say, you know, I'm not aware of that particular, um, you know, uh, event or story or case, but could you tell me some more details? Um, and, you know, maybe I can tell you what my thoughts would be about what I think the issues are, what the legal issues might be in that particular case. Um, because you may find you don't know that particular example, but actually the topic or the issues in it is something that you are aware of from your general commercial awareness. And then you can draw uh, attention to things that you have read to show that actually you are aware generally, it's just that you weren't aware of this particular example. Thank you very much. Um... Abania, do you have any uh, anything to add to this? Yeah, um, definitely don't sit there and say nothing. Um, as someone said, um, come up with something, say, make it, I mean, bring up something that you've already um, heard about in the news um, that's related. Um, you can say, well, I haven't heard about um, that particular case. However, I've heard about this. Uh, chambers appreciate uh, that kind of um, approach um so you, you just don't sit there and say nothing and you know act as if you, <laughs> you know absolutely nothing because you can't be aware of everything um that's going on in the news but what you need to do is be proactive and speak about what you know in the context of the question that's been asked at least um but it, as i said it, it's important to follow up with the news at least so you can have something to bounce back on it might not be the the, the answer that answer the exact question but you already have some idea of what has been happening in that industry. Thank you very much. Um, I know the whole bit about commercial awareness and uh, keeping up to date about news and current affairs was already emphasized before. Um, but our next question is, are there any mailing lists that you recommend that one could sign up for uh, where they're provided with a daily digest of recent or relevant commercial cases or developments? Um, I, I would say um, the, the, the lot of different um, resources out there, um, you have to go and do your research um, and you would find the information. Um, it, it is quite hard. I mean, obviously, if you're part of a group, you're part of clubs and stuff like that, you get um, information. I know um, if you're part of the tax academy, you get information about corporate tax, um, if you're part of, uh, for example, um, certain groups that I, I'm a part of, uh, the, uh, this group that um, basically um, teaches about commercial evolution law. I'm not sure if any one of you are familiar with that. Um, and you can actually sign up um, with them. Uh, they offer, I think it's through the University of Law, they offer um, workshop and they uh, invite you every Thursday. Um, the, the lady that uh, run that workshop, um, <laughs> excuse me, I'm just trying to remember her name, um, will um, accommodate a lot of students, explain to you exactly what is going on, how you can develop your skills commercially, um, sometimes offer jobs, um, uh, paid jobs on short term basis, and you know, just help you uh, in general. Um, to say that there's a a particular list or agency, usually you have to be a part of a group um, to get that um, uh, information. I'm a part of the um, Chartered Tax Academy and I would get some 
uh, information on, on what's going on commercially in the tax world through that. Um, but basically what I would say, just do your research. Um, uh, you can sign up. A, a lot of times they, they give you options online to sign up uh, to get their newsletters. Um, these days, everything you have to do, sometimes you have to pay a, a pound for or something like that, but they are certainly free resources out there. So I would say go and seek them out. Definitely. Thank you very much. Yeah, so um, if I can just add, um, for Evolution Law, yeah. it's Geraldine Golby. Um, so she runs a workshop on Thursday. You can find her on LinkedIn. Um, so um, if you reach out to her, um, normally she would be able uh, to assist you in terms of giving e of even additional advice. It's something that she do voluntarily. Um, so that's not a mailing list per se, but it's something that can help you. So. Thank you. Um, our next question um, is, I'm just scrolling up, there are quite a few. Um, should I aim to familiarize myself with business operating across multiple industries, or can I hone in more detail on a particular industry where I hope to end up practicing? Well, I'll definitely say it's up to the individual. I mean, it's up to you. If you want uh, to widen, that's a choice that you would have to make. If you want to widen uh, your knowledge, your scope um, in an in, in industry, then you can do that. If you want to focus on a particular um, area, if you want to specialize, then obviously um, you want to learn more about that. But that is, uh, to me, a personal choice that the individual will have to make. Do you, do you have anything to add to that? No, I mean, I agree. I think it's a personal choice. Um, you know, you either decide if you want to be a specialist, then you're thinking about, you know, there there are some sets that do really very, very specific work, you know, even within the commercial arena. And so you would only be reading around those specific issues. Whereas um, if you want to be more uh, generalist kind of commercial and, and, and have the experience of dealing with different groups, then then you want to read around more broadly or get around more broad experience, you know, uh, and compare and contrast. Ultimately, um, if you are going to be preparing for, you know, applications and interviews, you're going to have to make a decision about how you prepare. You know, are you going to go more broad or are you going to go more specific? Um, you know, uh, you have to think about time and what's on your hands, but it, I think it's a, it's a personal choice. Thank you very much. Um... Our next question is, um, I know we've already discussed quite a few commercial um, issues, but is there anything in particular that you have been following recently? So any particular commercial issues that um, you've read or uh, know about in the news? Um, I, what I would say, I mean, I think, you know, generally, um, you know, there, there are lots happening right now, obviously the political situation, uh, in this country is, you know, at the forefront, you know, who's our prime minister, how many days will they last, um, you know, what's happening around, uh, you know, kind of uh, mortgages, borrowing finance, you know, the value of, uh, of the pound, you know, how that impacts businesses, you know, um, whether that's import export, whether it's you going on, on a holiday. I mean, the economy, I think, is, is, the, is the huge um, thing in terms of what's happening right now um, but there are other things happening the professional uh, about to kind of happen obviously we had strikes um, happening uh, across various industries the train industry you know potentially nurses we had barristers striking not all barristers but a section of, of, of the bar um, so you know it's it's relevant to think about you know the impact of those uh, of those things on the kind of and the world that we are in right now um you know costs is always a big thing uh in in practice uh and then you know after that you'll have to think about specifically what area you're interested in there will always be specific cases you know um recent case lists blogs are good you know if you're interested in a particular area maybe follow a few blogs um around the area and that will keep you up to date on what may be the kind of emerging stories. Thank you very much. Um, we've received another question and it's for uh, Simao. Is that okay? One more question. Thank you. 
Um, have you found qualifying as a mediator in addition to a barrister uh, benefiting to your commercial practice? Um, definitely. I mean, I think, you know, when, even if I'm not mediating, let's say I'm uh, appearing as a barrister um, in front of a mediator, I understand the techniques, the process that the mediator tries um, or goes through to try to get the parties to reach agreement. So I think that's an advantage for me and my clients because I can advise them. I say, well, you know, OK, right. You know, my perspective is this mediator's got this kind of approach. I believe he or she's going to do X, Y and Z. They're going to take this approach, you know, um, you know, but it's also understanding this, the psychology of disputes. You know, um, very commonly I say to my clients, this is going to happen at this time at this event. And they're like, oh, how do you know? So, you know, I just you, you get a, a kind of a good um understanding of how things will develop throughout the day and then generally you all end up i'll say oh you know we'll settle at this amount i can see you know we're going to argue backwards and forwards but this is round about the figure so if we end up here can you live with it you know can we make a deal happen um so yes i think it's really important more and more the the you know it's part of the litigation process the court will ask you will give you time to try to find agreement um, particularly, we are still seeing huge backlogs in terms of litigation, you know, after we had COVID. And it means that sometimes cases are taking so long that really in terms of having certainty, bringing cases to an end, um, you know, clients have other, you know, uh, factors and things to think about that they want to reach a resolution. So you do look at ADR, mediation, arbitration, you look at those um, alternatives as a way of, of reaching agreement um, at an early stage. And I think it's only going to grow more and more as there's more encouragement. So uh, I think, you know, if you're able to gain some experience or, you know, start to think about you know, mediation and ADR, um, it will be something that long term will serve you. Thank you very much. Um, Avanya, we have a question um, regarding the person who conducts the workshops at the University of Law. Please, could you uh, drop it in the chat box just so that we can search it out? Okay, Thank yes, you. no problem. Thank you very much. Let me just uh, check for the name just a second. Does anyone else have a question that they'd like to ask um, our guest speakers? Please feel free to put it in the chat. Um, also, thank you to everyone who's um, asked any of their questions. They've been really interesting. and. Um, it's quite useful for those of us who are listening to these questions being answered as well. We've received one more question. Um, is commercial awareness relevant to other areas practice beyond finance or chancery? Um, and, you know, it, it, this could be to both of you or uh, either of you, any, any so. Yeah, definitely. As I said um, earlier, I worked in tax and that helped me fastly a lot. I was able to uh, not only help clients, but help my colleagues um, in terms of serving a, so, serving a lot of um, uh, problems that we had um, in relation to uh, not understanding certain things um, because uh, it's all about tax, you know, so sometimes people um, don't realize um, the importance of getting a vast amount of experience. Um, commercial um, practice goes across a lot of different uh, sectors, and I think it's definitely, definitely um, helped in, in that area as well. So um, as I said, uh, broaden your scope, don't keep it uh, narrow, don't look at one aspect of thing, look at different avenues, look at different roads. There are a lot of opportunities, have to be open to them. Um, the, these opportunities often lead uh, to where you want to go in, go in the end. So um, don't stay stagnant, waiting for pupillage. Um, if you can't get pupillage, uh, in the meantime, get voluntary work experience, um, look for paid work experience, you know, do other things that will develop um, your commercial awareness skill that will help you in the long run. Don't just sit around and get depressed, go out there and uh, help yourself and look at different avenues um, to develop your skill and help you. Thank you very much. 
Does anyone else have any questions that they'd like to um, include in the chat box? Anything that they'd like to ask themselves? If not, um, I'd like to thank everyone who've uh, attended today's session. Um, thank you to uh, both speakers for uh, answering the many questions that all of us have posed to you. Uh, it has been really helpful. I made a lot of notes. I'm sure all the attendees found it useful as well. Um, thank you very much again for coming along with us, uh, joining and helping this workshop be a successful one. Thank you very much, Simao and Abanya. And thanks to Aspiring Barristers for organizing this workshop for us. Thank you for having Thank us. Thank you. Thank you. I have uh, put the information in the chat um, and you can find the information um, yeah, right there. Thank you. Thank Bye. you very much, Abanya. Hope you all have a good night and good evening. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Take care.